We're live. And we're live. Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Councillor Emmett McKenna, and I am the chair of the Planning Applications Committee for Reading Borough Council. I would like to welcome you to the Planning Applications Committee, which for the first time ever is being held as an online meeting. With both the lockdown and social distancing rules still in place, councillors are meeting tonight on this video conferencing platform instead of meeting in person at the civic offices. The Coronavirus Act 2020 has allowed the planning applications committees to be conducted online and attended remotely by both members and officers. The public and press can still see and hear the meeting, but public speaking has been has been changed as detailed in the protocol for online meetings of the Planning Applications Committee, which is tabled as agenda item one. For the time being, written representations from the public will be considered instead, and these may be found in the update pack for this meeting with the agenda. Agenda papers have been circulated on the Council's website in accordance with our usual practice. Running this meeting remotely poses a number of challenges. We will need to ensure that a proper discussion takes place on the matters before us and that where a decision is required, it is clear what has been decided and by whom. Where appropriate, members will be asked to vote individually, stating if they are for, against or wish to abstain. There is also the challenge of ensuring that members of the public observing the proceedings can follow the meeting and understand how decisions have been reached. For this reason, we will be, we will be presenting some of the information on slides as we proceed to help the councillors and members of the public understand where we are in each part of the proceedings. If councillors are in any doubt about the proceedings as we progress tonight, please will you raise a point of order so that the matter can be clarified. I appreciate that all councillors are used to a normal committee meeting, but this is new territory for us all. Members and officers attending will be asked to introduce themselves. This is for the benefit of the public and also to ensure that all are in attendance as expected and that they can both hear and speak to the meeting. To help me manage the meeting, members have been asked to make me aware if they wish to speak on an item in advance, and thank you. This does not prevent additional contributions being made, but I ask all councillors to notify me when you wish to speak in the chat section of their screens and then wait to be called. This will avoid councillors talking over each other. When not speaking, please will councillors put their microphones on mute. When called to speak, please unmute your microphone and pause for about three seconds to allow for the slight time delay in connection. We do not want to miss your opening remarks. I'm aware that we're at the mercy of individuals broadband services and it is possible that loss of connection may happen. However, as long as we have five members still in the meeting, we remain quiet. I will now do a roll call of councillors. As I say your name, could you introduce yourselves to the meeting? As stated, I'm Councillor Emmett McKenna, <coughs> Chair of Planning Applications Committee, and I represent Whitley Ward. I will call on the other members of the committee alphabetically. Councillors, please state your name and the ward you represent. Please speak slowly and clearly for the benefit of the record. Councillor Devine, I will call you first. Thank you, it's Ricky Devine, Tarnhurst Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Councillor Ennis. <clears throat> Hello, it's Councillor John Ennis. Uh, I represent Southcote Ward and I'm also the Councillor for Housing. Thank you. I'm now going to call Councillor Lovelock. Hello, I'm Councillor Joe Lovelock and I represent Norcott Ward. Thank you. Councillor Page. 
Uh, good evening, Chair, Councillor Tony Page. I'm the lead member for Strategic Environment Planning and Transport and Deputy Leader of the Council, and I represent the town centre area of Abbey Ward. Councillor Robinson. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Simon Robinson here, representing Peppard Ward. Uh, just for clarity, I didn't see your video, Simon. Do you have it switched on? I can switch it on. It's just obviously bandwidth issues uh, do cause problems with. I appreciate uh, it. It's just for at this point in the meeting so that you can declare yourself and then we'll switch them off afterwards, of course. Certainly. OK. okay. Uh, as I still can't see you at the top of your laptop, there should be something over your camera. If you could remove that, it's only in the interest of when we wish to address the committee. OK, Thank all right. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. <coughs> I'll now call Councillor Rowland. Right. Hi, Chair. This is Councillor Karen Rowland and I represent Abbey Ward. I'm also the lead member for Culture, Heritage and Recreation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowland. Councillor Sakala. Hello, I'm Councillor Shokala. Um, I represent Caversham Ward and I'm also Vice Chair of Planning Applications Committee. Thank you. Councillor Stanford Bain. Uh, good evening, Chair. I'm Councillor Stanford Beale and I am um, Peppard Ward Councillor, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Josh Williams. Good evening, Chair. Yeah, Councillor Josh Williams, Park Ward. Thank you. And now we're, thank you, Councillors. I would also like to introduce the officers who are in attendance tonight. They will not be on screen as much as the councillors, but it is right that I introduce them so that you will know who they are and what their role in this meeting is. I will start with Julie Williams, our, is our planning development manager. She is our senior planning advisor and is responsible for the work of the planning team. She will also advise me tonight on any matters relating to planning policy, guidance and practice. Richard Etoff is the development management team leader within the planning department. He is presenting the reports on the applications this evening. Wendy Baddison is a planning solicitor in the council's legal department. She is here to advise me on planning law and local government law. This is to ensure that when the committee makes a decision, it is both within its powers and legally sound. Simon Hill and Nikki Simpson are committee service officers. They're here to advise on the council's procedures and will take minutes of the meeting. I would like to advise members of the public that they're not able to make any further contributions to this meeting beyond the written representations in the update pack. With the introductions out of the way, let us turn to the procedural matters. And that begins with agenda item one, which is the protocol under which we'll be running this meeting. The policy committee on the 27th of April agreed a new protocol which will apply to the planning applications committee whilst there's a lockdown in force and meetings are held online. This protocol is on pages seven to 10 of the agenda pack. It is not my intention to open the matter for debate as the new protocol has already been decided on Monday. However, before we proceed, it seems right to ensure that all members are familiar with the new arrangements as they will apply to us in this meeting tonight. Do any members wish to ask questions on the protocol? If you do wish to speak, please remember to unmute your microphone and advise the public who is speaking. As no one appears to be speaking, then we'll move forward. For voting on information items on this meeting, including this protocol, I will ask if we are content to proceed. I will then pause for 10 seconds after asking the question and will take silence to mean that all members are agreed. 
on any of the matters of the planning committee that we will need to decide for decision making purposes, we will all do a vote formally. Councillors, do we agree to note the contents of the protocol? Thank you, that is agreed. Moving on to agenda item two, minutes of the last meeting. These are to be found at pages 11 to 22 of the agenda pack. Members, can you confirm that the meeting, that the minutes are a correct record of the meeting held on the 5th of March 2020? Thank you, that is agreed. Turning now to the declarations of interest, agenda item three, under the Council's Code of Conduct. Do any members have any declarations of interest that they wish to bring to the attention of the committee? Um, <clears throat> Chair, it's John Ennis, um, Safka Councillor. I wish to declare an interest on items number nine, and <clears throat> number 11, 72 Brunswick and 72 Circuit Lane, Reading Borough Council uh, applications. I have a predetermination as lead councillor for housing. I've been involved in the promotion. Uh, I would like to speak in favour, but I will not be voting as I have a predetermination. Thank you. Councillor, having taken legal advice, you're not predetermined on the items within the language. So we will call you to speak at the start of the item and then ask you to abstain as appropriate at voting, but otherwise take no further part in the meeting. Are yeah, you no content? Problem. Yeah, absolutely. No problems with that. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. For those two items, for all other items, you're a full member of the committee. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that explanation, Councillor Ennis. Are there any other declarations of interest. Thank you, councillors. Turning next to questions, agenda item four. No questions from members of the public have been tabled at this meeting, so we move on. Agenda item five, site visits. The committee often wishes to undertake site visits to application sites to better inform itself about the environment in that location the layout of the street scene and relationship to neighbouring properties, etc. And normally this report would consider these. However, in the current crisis, it is being proposed to change this process. Please can I ask the planning manager to introduce your report? Yes, hello. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, councillors. Um, as already explained, the report ex sets out why officers aren't recommending um, that we do any accompanied or unaccompanied site visits until we have more detail on how the lockdown is going to pursue, um, continue. However, I am aware that um, at the last applications committee, we did defer um, one item, 45 Watlington Street, subject to an unaccompanied site visit. Um, that was decision was made early in March, and it may well be that some councillors have already been able to make unaccompanied visits to the site. Um, what I'm asking members to consider, as well as with other site visits that we may have coming up in due course, is to allow officers to present to you uh, maybe a combination of photographs and maybe video footage to help you inform you on the character of the sites and the main points to consider when you're making your decisions. Um, if members can agree to that, um, as a way forward to so we can get business done uh, for 45 Watlington Street, we'll be able to bring that back to you on the next agenda. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Page, you've indicated you wish to speak. Uh, yes, Chair, Councillor Tony Page. Um, both myself and Councillor Rowland as Abbey councillors have already conducted an informal site visit uh, to 45 Watlington Street um, and uh, I certainly support the uh, broader way forward that uh, Julie Williams has indicated and uh, 
therefore circulating um, video or photos or mixture of both um, ahead of the uh, appropriate item would be uh, appreciated. So uh, we would uh, welcome the Watlington Street application deferred at the last meeting being brought to the next meeting for determination and uh, I think all colleagues will support the uh, broader approach that she has proposed and uh, I would uh, propose that to uh, chair. Thank you. Councillors, are there any further questions or comments on this item? Then the proposal is put do we accept and are we content to proceed on this basis? I'll take silence. Thank you. As councillors are agreed, we'll move on to the next item. The next item relates to planning appeals, which are provided in members for members information on pages 25 to 34 of the agenda pack. Please, can I ask the planning manager, Julie Williams, to introduce the item? Thank you, Chair. Um, the appeal report provides you with information on appeals lodged and those decisions received. Um, I'm very pleased to say that all the decisions received so far have been dismissals, and you have in your pack three reports on three tree protection orders where applications to fell or do works to trees have been dismissed. So I simply ask you to note the report. Thank you. Councillors, does anyone wish to speak on this item? Then I'll go and congratulate officers on the clean sweep. And thank you for your continued efforts and particularly the inspectorate defending Reading's position on our green environment and the importance of trees and what is a condensed urban environment. Thank you. Councillors, are we content to note the report and proceed? Thank you, that is agreed. We move next to agenda item seven, applications for prior approval. Prior approvals are matters which are notified to the planning department under regulation and are passed automatically provided they meet the criteria in these regulations. The committee has no power to debate or change the decisions which are listed and they are here for information purposes. I call on the planning manager, Julie Williams. Thank you, Chair. I've got nothing further to add to the report or your introduction, so I just simply ask that members note the report. Thank you. On mute. Thank you, Julie. Councillors, do we have any questions or comments on this report? Thank you. Then we'll proceed to the next, which is the annual performance monitoring report. And I will call uh, planning manager Julie Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is sort of like the end of year school report for the planning section. It sets out the information on applications considered over the past year with comparisons with the previous two years. Um, it sets performance against government set targets and that information is given to you. Although I noted reading the report again that I've made an error in the paragraph 4.3. I refer back to last year's date for the publication of the statistics. It said that this year's date was 25th of March 2020 and the data that's set against that in that paragraph is correct as, as of that date, and that covers quarters one, two and three of 2019 to 2020. Um, looking at the uh, tables, you can see that um, we've been working very well, but overall all application types have dropped over the year. Um, but in terms of the workload we're dealing with, um, I think it's sort of been matched by some a drop of resources. It's certainly been quite a testing year for planners, so I'm very glad that we uh, have still managed to keep on target um, over the year. Um, I just also would like to um, make a note that um, these last five weeks have shown to me what a really good planning team we have working in the planning section. 
across the board and I'm really grateful to them for being so adaptable to the new working situation and to coping with the new technologies. So I just want to use this opportunity to thank them all. I'm hoping they're all watching. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Councillors, does anyone wish to speak on this item? Then I do, I do, if that's OK. Sorry, I just want to echo them points to Julie. Uh, although I've been around as a councillor for a while, um, and like to oppose matters now, since being on the planning applications committee i've found the team so helpful uh, and supportive in advising on situations planning so i'd like to echo them points julie thank you thank you and now i will also echo the points that both yourself and councillor ennis has made it's a testing time and tribute should rightly be paid also looking through the report we can see a significant uptick in the number of appeals which the department is facing without any increase in the amount of dismissals showing the sterling efforts to defend Reading's positions the fact that with a significant increase in appeals we aren't losing any more is important to us as we move forward thank you councillors i will then say we've noted this report are we content to proceed? Excellent. And um, thank you, that was agreed. We will now move on to the second section of the meeting to consider the officers' reports presented for the four planning applications you see on screen. As mentioned in my introduction to this meeting, to help with managing this event, councillors have been asked to make me aware if they wish to speak on an item in advance. After the planning officer has presented the report, I will then call on those councillors that have already asked to speak. If any councillors have a question or want to comment, please indicate in the chat function of this meeting so I can call you to speak. The first application is at item nine in the agenda. Application reference 190848 Reg 3, 72 Brunswick Street. For the benefit of the public, a Regulation 3 application is an application for planning permission submitted by the Council. All such applications come to the Planning Applications Committee for reasons of openness and transparency. Please can councillors turn to pages 53 to 58 of the agenda pack. I will now call on the development management team leader Richard Etoff to present the application. Thank you. Uh, thank you chair and uh, good evening committee. There's also uh, uh, an update report. Um, uh, sorry there's not an update report on this item. This is um, 72 uh, Brunswick Street. Um, Councillors resolved to grant planning permission for an earlier application to convert uh, redundant space on the ground floor of this small block of flats, which lies close to the junction of Brunswick Street and Bath Road. Uh, pictures of the site are on slide one. Uh, however, that application was then withdrawn before actually being approved as the applicant, who is RBC Housing, decided to uh, amend the proposal to make the living area larger and to retain a small laundry area for other residents. The report confirms that no objections have been received and explains why the new proposal was considered to be acceptable and that it meets the relevant local plan uh, policies. Uh, the block plan on slide two uh, shows, uh, indicates uh, red where the site of the, of the uh, proposed flat will be and where the works will take place. Slide three shows the more detailed uh, layout of the new flat and the communal areas. Slide four shows the most uh, relevant elevation, very little changes to the appearance of the building. Uh, the officer recommendation is to grant planning permission subject to a unilateral undertaking uh, being entered into to secure the unit for affordable housing. Uh, the only thing to add to the report is to also seek um, officers uh, delegated authority uh, to refuse if the uh, Section 106 unilateral undertaking is uh, not completed. 
Uh, thank you, Chair. And back on. So thank you, Chair. Councillors, uh, sorry, two seconds. I will now call on Councillor Ennis to speak as previously during the declarations. Councillor Ennis. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm um, I'm speaking in favour and then not voting because I've got the predetermination. Uh, I was involved in the planning application. Certainly, I've, we think a total social housing is to utilise as much council housing area as possible to alleviate homelessness uh, and afford, create more affordable housing. Uh, totally support the application um, and also support what the reasons why it was withdrawn. I mean, thank you for mentioning that, Richard, withdrawn and then brought back because when it first came to light, there were issues about drying and washing areas for the residents that live in the block. Uh, and it was a case of, um, you know, the council listen and then act because it, it was a bit of a force, you know, a bit of a lack of foresight to understand that the facilities were needed uh, by the residents in the block and therefore the plan application has been amended to take into consideration the existing tenants. So not only am I uh, pleased this is going forward hopefully uh, and, and voted uh, in favour of is that we're creating a new council flat but also we're not negatively impacting on the current residents. Uh, I know there's been no objections, but there were objections at the start, and it's good that this has been amended to note now that there are no objections. So fully support this, and I will then be not voting for it as I'm predetermined. But thank you, Chair. Thank you. I've had no further indications to speak from any other councillors on this item. So I will now ask officers if they have any comments to make following the contributions. Richard Etoff, would you like to comment? Uh, thank you, Chair. I've got uh, nothing further to add. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Batherson from Legal, do you have any comments? Uh, no comments to make, Chair. Thank you. I will now put the officer's recommendation to the vote. Councillors, please respond with for, against or abstain when I call your name. Each of you will be called in alphabetical order, starting with Councillor Devane. For. Councillor Ennis. I'm abstaining. Thank you. Councillor Lovelock. For. Councillor Page. For. Councillor Robinson. For. Councillor Rowland. Four. Councillor Sukale. Four. Councillor Stamford Bale. Four. Councillor Williams. Four. Thank you, councillors. I will also vote Chair, for. Sir, sorry. Rob, Chair. Yes. Just on a point of order, Councillor Stanford Bale appears to have been long, wrongly labelled on my screen. She shown as a Talos Liberal Democrat. Ah. Yes, I'm not. I'm definitely a Conservative and I'm definitely from Peppard Ward, north of the river. These things do try us and we will fix it for next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and apologies. Anyway, these things happen. We'll move forward. I vote for this application. It's now unanimous of those that have declared one way or the other. The application is granted subject to the unilateral undertaking being agreed as recommended. We now move to agenda item 10, 10 pegs green close, application 191757. The report can be found on pages 68, sorry, 69 to 84 of the agenda pack. Some members of the public have indicated that they would have liked to speak on this item. However, in accordance with the new protocol for holding online committee meetings, they have been asked to provide written statements instead. 
These statements are provided in the update pack circulated to members and placed on the Council's website. I will now call on the planning officer to introduce the report on this application. I will then call on councillors Lovelock, Roland and Stamford Bale in that order who have already indicated that they wish to speak on this item. As before, if anyone else wishes to speak, please indicate in the chat function so I can add you to the list. Richard Etoff, fire away. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 10 Pegs Green Close is a semi-detached house located at the head of this small cul-de-sac um, which climbs up in ground level from Tilehurst Road. Uh, please see the photos on slide one. Um, number eight is to the uh, west, off to the left, you can just see it in shot, and number nine to the east is the attached semi. Um, if we can go to slide two to see a location plan. Uh, members uh, last year refused planning permission for application reference 190357. Uh, this was for a uh, two storey uh, side and rear extension and a single storey uh, front extension um, and uh, which was a porch and a single storey rear extension with a loft conversion and a new dormer window. There was an appeal against that refusal and it was dismissed and the reasons for refusal as imposed by members were upheld. upheld. The reasons for dismissal were as follows. Um, the lack of subservience in size and design for it to be seen as an acceptable addition to the host building. Uh, the combination of changes to the front with the proposed two storey side extension porch and alterations to the front garden would have a harmful effect on the character and appearance of the host building and the street. The length and height of the single storey element of the proposed extension uh, would have a detrimental impact on the living conditions of occupiers of number nine Pegs Green Close. Uh, so that was the that was the single storey rear element. Uh, plans of the dismissed application are shown on slide three and they're also appended to the report. Um, referring to slide four, the proposal has been changed since the appeal proposal with the single storey rear extension on the boundary with number nine now omitted. Although the committee um, uh, should be aware uh, that in normal circumstances, uh, a three metre deep extension could be built in this area under permitted development rights. The side extension, the two storey side extension has now been set in at first floor level from the side. Uh, previously, this was flush with the ground floor. Referring to slide five, the plan shows that the frontal parking area has been adjusted. This allows more of the front garden and front boundary wall to be retained. There is an amended plan uh, which has now been provided to further clarify how this parking area would work and uh, the highway authority have, has since confirmed that that is acceptable. Referring to slide six, uh, officers consider that the revised application now provides more space and gapping at first floor level and reduces the impact on the neighbouring property uh, to the uh, west. Whilst the changes to the side extension and the parking area are relatively modest, um, your officers nonetheless consider that they represent a sufficient change to overcome the inspector's concerns. Therefore, the recommendation is to grant planning permission with an additional uh, condition needed to undertake and retain the uh, parking area. Um, the update report um, has the public statements within it. Um, there are, uh, I think, six now. Uh, there's also a uh, response from the um, applicant, uh, Mrs. Akhtar, in there, where she um, she explains the how she's overcome the she thinks she's overcome the reasons for the uh, previous appeal being dismissed. Um, and that uh, planning permission should be granted. So 
uh, as I say, the officer recommendation uh, chair and committee uh, is to grant. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm now going to call on Councillor Lovelock to speak. Thank you, Chair. I think I've unmuted. Yes, I'm Joe Lovelock. I'm uh, one of the Norcott councillors. Um, I first of all um, hope that everybody's managed to read uh, the comments from local residents who would very much have been here tonight. Um, and there are only 10 houses in this close and, and that we had uh, representations from nearly all of those neighbours about this application as we did with the last one. Uh, and I think the best way for me to proceed at the moment in terms of making sure that residents are happy that their concerns have been considered is to turn to the update pack on page eight. Um, and this um, representation was also signed by residents at eight, nine, seven and five, Pegs Green Close, who've also submitted separate um, uh, comments um, uh, as has uh, the resident at number three now. Um, and I'd just, I'd just go through the headings. I won't read it all out because I think if people, I hope members have been able to look at all this. Um, but the, the first concern people have got is that they feel that the application is so little changed, apart from the removal, obviously, of the single storey extension at the back. But the side two storey and, and wrap around the back uh, extension, which co is, is what's causing most concern, uh, is very little changed. Uh, and they actually point out, as is in the report, that uh, the, the, the side first floor loses a mere six inches uh, and then a, a mere 11 inches off the front, which is less than a, a length of a brick. Um, in relation to the overall plan, it's almost unnoticeable and is very much still a great mass um, and doubles the size of this property, uh, making uh, a very different appearance um, from the rest of the close. There are other extensions, and I, I should add that uh, residents have said to me they'd be very happy if a single storey uh, or a much lesser extension uh, that was in keeping came forward and not trying to prevent the owners improving their property. But what they really object to is the massing uh, of this and they don't believe that the the tweaks that have been provided in this current application um, actually address that issue and still would lead to um, a completely different appearance uh, of this property at, which is out of keeping uh, with the rest of the close. They also object to the new front porch. Um, uh, it might only be uh, something like um, just over the three metres, but nevertheless, it is over the guidance in terms of porches and they again feel it's totally out of keeping. They've also highlighted some uh, issues that they uh, that the plan is, as I say, practically doubling is doubling this house. Um, and normally that would not be something that would be permitted. Uh, an extension of more than one story must not. We the planning guidance says extensions of more than one storey must not extend beyond the rear wall of the original house by more than three metres. This goes back by four and a half metres. And then secondly, uh, maximum eaves height of an extension within two metres of the boundary of three metres. The side extension is um, three, so I'm just reading the notes from the resident, um, 300 millimetres from number eight boundary. This is more than three metres high uh, with the double storey. Side extension should be single storey. And of course, obviously, this is double storey. Uh, they also refer to the, um, the fact that they can't understand why this seems to breach the guidance that we would normally be following. Um, the loss of privacy and light for, for particularly number nine is something that they are not convinced about um, and, and they, they feel that it's the double storey um, extension which is going to cause the most problems for the resident at number nine. Uh, there's also a lot of concern about this property being used as a house of multiple occupation and I appreciate that that is not a planning issue but nevertheless uh, they have reason to be concerned because it was used as a, an HMO in, in, in very recently and 
they are fearful that that would return. Uh, they're also concerned about the parking. I, mean, I appreciate that's been amended and people haven't been able to, public probably haven't been able to look at that at the moment. Um, but nevertheless, were it to be used as an HMO, it would certainly be causing them a lot of difficulties. Um, I would refer to the, um, the the inspector's report as well, as you as you said in your introduction, um, that uh, the committee turned it down unanimously, I believe, at the time, uh, and it went to appeal. The inspector um, supported the reasons for refusal and in particular commented on the fact that the um, the, the new side extension um, with the uh, built form occupying much of the width of the whole site would create a mass and bulk of development that would be out of keeping with the, uh, the particular character of Pegs Green Close uh, and of the cold sun, particularly as it's at the top of a hill, very prominently in the middle of the, um, the turning head at the top, it would be uh, very much out of, of keeping with that. So I, I have given this a lot of thought because obviously um, we want to be fair to everybody on this, but I do believe that this application is so minimally different from the last one, apart from the single storey extension, which probably wouldn't have been an issue. Um, it is so minimally different that I believe that we should uh, reject it again tonight for the particularly uh, the out of character nature of the two storey side extension, which goes back much further than we would normally um, expect as well. So Chair, um, I might want to come back in later, depending on what other people have said, but I do you want me to make a proposal at this stage that we should reject this application, particularly on the, the um, issues to do with the the overdevelopment and the massing uh, and the appearance um, and the change it would bring to the the whole um, feeling of of uh, Pegs Green Court, uh, Pegs Green Close. Do you want me to make that proposal now, or do you? Uh, Councillor Lovelock, you can make the proposal at the end of the debate. Okay, thank you. Once councillors have spoken. Thank you. Just for our procedures, I'll now call on Councillor Rowland to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, I hope that you can hear me. Um, I just wanted to reiterate uh, and, and back up uh, some of Councillor Lovelock's concerns that she has expressed from residents uh, about this site and, and say that I too have uh, taken a careful consideration of this application. Um, simply because we have a recommendation here, uh, but I do not feel, I've I've looked closely back with the inspector's report that upheld uh, our decision basically and supported what we said that the last time. And I look at what we have here today and visually when you drive into or you walk into that close, this is the dominant building in front of you. So it is, it is part of a semi uh, detached property. And uh, so if we were to have a two story extension on that side, we would get a real imbalance right as you are looking into the close and it would be imbalanced with the other part of the semi. So um, I also tend to feel that a two story extension, which really is, yes, less than a brick length, um, receded back from the from the uh, first um, application is really not come far enough in maintaining the appearance and character within the close. And I go back to the fact that it came to the inspector because the character and appearance of the house building and the street scene. And that is what he um, made a decision on he or she I, I don't know whether it was a he or a she e um, and so the point is is that in number five uh, of the inspector's report which Councillor Lovelock pointed to about the massing and keeping the spacious character of the cul-de-sac was something that he absolutely felt was was uh, would be uh, would would there would there would be an issue with that um, the other points too was with the proposed strong porch, which didn't really seem to have changed uh, significantly here. 
Uh, so on that on on the three points that the inspector uh, spoke about in point eight of the inspector's report, he says, therefore, on the first main issue, I conclude that the proposed two story side extension porch and the alterations to the front garden, which had been somewhat ameliorated, would have a harmful effect on the character and appearance of the host building and the street scene. And I go back to that again and I say I cannot get past that point. So when Councillor Lovelock has presented the residents uh, concerns, um, I also find that backed up substantially for myself in the inspector's report and I do not feel that this uh, application has changed substantially enough. Uh, I agree that no one should be sitting down there saying that they should not be allowed some kind of an extension, but if they are to look at doing something more symmetrical and in keeping with the close, a single story extension would be a much more likely option. And it's something that uh, the other side of the semi has done. And it's something that I would think might be more appropriate in this case. So. Uh, I will go with the sentiments of Councillor Lovelock on this one. So thank you. Okay. Councillor Stanford Bain, can you address the committee? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I attended the site visit last summer. Um, does seem like a long time ago now. Um, and the thing that struck me was the original plans had this um, very much overbearing nature from the street scene, as Councillor Rowland has said. The new plans only want to give a 30, a, a 300 millimetre gap between the boundary and the side extension. Um, you know, that's a 30 centimetre school ruler, and I just think that means it's going to be far too overbearing for the street scene, um, and it would be very difficult to maintain the image of semi detached house. It will mainly, it will become lo looking like a terrace scene. Um, I feel that the, the scale and massing of this, this extension is just too much and that the, uh, that the applicant hasn't reduced it in size enough. This is not different enough from the original application that was put in for us to be able to grant planning permission for this. Um, so again, I agree with Councillor Rowlands and Lovelock. Thank you. Thank you. Do any other councillors who have not already spoken wish to speak on this item? Then I'll do so just for the committee's benefit. The size of a standard brick is about nine inches, not 12. I've put a few of them together. But other than saying that 12 inches is not subservient. I was also on the site visit. I agree with the points from all three councillors who have spoken that it is an overdevelopment. And so I will then call Councillor Lovelock, who has previously indicated you wish to raise a motion to this committee. Yes, Chair, I think I've unmuted. Um, yeah, I would like to propose that we reject uh, this application uh, and in particular pay attention to the, um, the, the two storey side extension, which is going to both uh, alter the street scene considerably um, is very overbearing. It's like doubling the size of the entire house um, and ask that we um, that 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 I hope that colleagues will agree that we should um, tell them that we reject this and ask them to go away and think again about what would potentially be acceptable. Councillors, does anyone else wish to speak before I put this to the vote? Did we know? Okay. And just before I do so, I'm going to call case officer, sorry, the development team leader, Richard Etoff, if you would like to comment. Yes, I would. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, I can hear the um, sentiments of, of councillors here. Um, for this application. Um, so we had the three reasons which um, came from the previous dismissal. Um, obviously the one to do with the dominance of the single storey rear extension, that's fallen away. 
Um, the other two were both uh, design related. So one was was the uh, subservience, subservience and dominance of the two story side extension itself. Um, and then the next one was was kind of a cumulative reason um, to do with the extension plus the porch plus the parking area. So um, before I go on uh, any further and I'd like to be able to come back chair, but just before I do, can I just seek clarification that what uh, members would wish to refuse here is really focusing on the two story element because uh, I would say that would be probably the most uh, robust uh, reason um, and we probably wouldn't go wanting to take any uh, other matters into account in forming a reason for refusal. Can I just just check with you that, that that's how we would go forward, please? Yes, and I will double check with councillors if they're content. Uh, yes, Chair, I do agree with that, but I think we also need to ensure that how we make it clear that while the, the, the massing is unacceptable, it is also the overall impact on the close and when you look up that hill, what it would do to the street scene of what is now a cul-de-sac of semi-detached houses. Yeah. Which corresponds. Thank you. Would you like me to come back on that, Chair? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I think we, we would need a reason that um, is is probably very similar to the, the the one that sort of left from the uh, appeal really and it is the sort of combination of the massing uh, the lack of subservience i've also heard um issues on the street scene and i think that that uh, the vista that you would get down uh, pegs green close um i had the issue of of possible uh, terracing as well uh, and overall the scale and massing seems to be uh, too much and I suppose whilst we wouldn't put it in a reason for refusal the uh, the underlying sentiment is that uh, it hasn't changed significantly from before. Um, with uh, those uh, sort of uh, sentiments and feelings to be uh, wrapped into a reason for refusal chair um, I request officer delegated authority to get that uh, reason for refusal as robust as possible if you are minded to refuse. Thank you. Yes, yes we'll delegate that it'll be on the reasons of the cumulative impact of the development it's massing and so forth the size the scale within its street scene and the wording to be devolved to officers to make it appropriately and as robust as possible. I'll now call on legal. Wendy, do you have anything to say at this point? Um, yes, Chair, I think you're, you're actually looking at policy H9 in the local plan for the, the, what appears to cover the, the reasons that members have mentioned for rejecting this application, if that clarifies matters. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. I'll now put the proposal that we refuse for the stated reasons with the exact wording to be delegated to officers for the decision note and we'll call councillors in each name alphabetically. Starting with Councillor Devine, can you indicate if you're for, against or abstain on this item? For. Councillor Ennis. <coughs> against. Sir. Councillor Lovelock. <laughs> Councillor Lovelock, could you indicate how you wish to vote? Councillor Lovelock, is your microphone muted or are you available? Sorry, is that better? Much better. Sorry, Chair, I'm, I think we might have a confusion here mm. because I don't I, I don't know whether Councillor Devine was voting against or for um, my proposal because I've made a proposal and I suspect um, we need to be absolutely clear what we're voting on. OK, so for clarity, Councillor Lovelock has 
stated a proposal. We're voting for or against Councillor Lovelock's proposal, which is to refuse this item. I will double check with councillors. Councillor Devine, you indicated that you were for Councillor Lovelock's proposal to refuse. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. I'm voting for the proposal to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Councillor Ennis, you voted that you uh, were against. Yes, yes, I, I, I want to ref I want to vote for Councillor Lovelock's proposal to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Lovelock. Yes, Chair, I want to refuse. Thank you, you. Councillor Page. Yes, very much refusal on my part. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Likewise, refusal for me. Councillor Rowland. I'm for Councillor Lovelock's uh, proposal to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Sukale. I'm also for Councillor Lovelock's proposal to refuse this application. Councillor Stanford B. I am for the proposal to refuse. Councillor Josh Williams. I am for the proposal. And now I will vote also for Councillor Lovelock's proposal. That is now unanimous decision to refuse planning permission on this item. And the appropriate wording will be provided within the decision notice to be issued subsequent to this meeting. We will now move on to agenda item 11. 76 Circuit Lane, application 190706. Please can councillors turn to pages 83 to 94 of the agenda pack. I will now call on Richard Etoff to introduce the report on this application. I will then call on councillor Ennis to speak, followed by councillor Rowland. As before, please indicate in the chat function if you would also wish to speak. And I'll call on Richard Etoff. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is the second uh, Council Own Regulation 3 application on your agenda tonight. Um, it's submitted by the Council to provide for uh, an affordable house. Uh, the proposed scheme seeks planning permission for an additional dwelling in filling an existing gap between numbers uh, 76 and 80 Circuit Lane. There is no existing number 78. The site is shown on the photo on slide one. The scheme is to provide a two bedroom detached property for the floor plans, uh, see slide two. The proposed simple design is considered acceptable for this infill location as shown on slide three. Um, the proposed dwelling will have private amenity space to the rear and off street parking in a similar arrangement to other houses in the street. Um, see slide three for the block plan. With an agreement to secure affordable housing and appropriate conditions, the proposal is considered to be acceptable by officers. It would not harm the character of the area nor the amenity of neighbouring properties. Uh, no objections have been received and no concerns raised with regard to transport matters. And as such, um, planning permission is recommended for, for uh, approval, um, subject to the uh, Section 106 unilateral undertaking for uh, to retain the property for uh, in a, uh, as affordable housing. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, and I'll call on Councillor Ennis. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Richard, for your introduction. Um, for, and also for allowing me to speak in this, I will be predetermining and speaking in favour very much of a family um, house, a two bedroom house, council house, 100% affordable um, rent in an area that is in desperate need of family housing. Um, many a time I've been a councillor in Southcote for a long, long time and have visited um, residents who used to live there. Uh, and often thought mm, you could get you could get another house in there. It's quite obvious, um, and I think a lot of other people have said that in residents in the area. Hence, I'm really pleased to say that there are no objections. 
Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's exactly what we should be doing as a council. We should be utilising as much space as possible. It's green. It's not greenfield. It's brownfield. Uh, it's ideal. It won't affect the area at all. In fact, it, I think a brand new um, council property as one of the best standards in Reading, which if you read the standards will be excellent, uh, would enhance the area um, and give much needed social housing to families uh, with young children uh, as possible. Also potential for disability access as well, I think is very much welcome. So we'll fully supportive but obviously predetermined, I will abstain. Um, thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rowland. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I would uh, uh, just I'd like to ask a question uh, of clarification on page 93 two officers and then uh, I'll just add something to that once I get that clarification of the front elevation on page 93 of our packet wherein I don't really understand the area between the proposed building and what is currently number 76 circuit lane. There seems to be almost an, a passageway between the two structures that I can't really understand and I would just like to get an officer clarification as to what that is. In the first instance, thanks. Thank you. Richard, would you be able to address that? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it does appear to be a kind of a passageway or uh, an elevated canopy. Um, as you can see, it has a, a pitch roof towards the front and to the rear. And as you see on the front elevation there, uh, it's just um, a, a blank space. So you, you would be sort of looking through it, which is why there's nothing on the floor plans. Um, we're not sure at this point of the of the um, of the purpose of it, uh, but we don't think it's harmful. It's set well back um, and obviously it is part of the development and within the red line and we are um, happy that there is uh, sufficient information uh, about it contained within the application. OK. Councillor Rowland. Yes, thank you. OK, th thank you very much for that, uh, uh, Richard. I appreciate that. And uh, be beyond that, I would also uh, um, actually echo Councillor Ennis's sentiments in so far as uh, this really should be the opportunities that we are looking for to create affordable family housing uh, on a brownfield site indeed. And I think this will be a really welcome um, um, home for hopefully a small family, exactly what we need. And I welcome that and uh, would support the application. Thank you. Councillors, does anyone else wish to speak on this item? Excellent. I will now ask Richard if there are any follow up comments he'd wish to make. No, I don't think so. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Wendy Batherson from Legal, do you have any comments? No, Chair, no comments from me. OK. I will now put the officer's recommendations to the vote. Councillors, please respond with for, against or abstain when I call your name. And I will call Councillor Devine first. For. Councillor Ennis. Uh, abstain. Councillor Lovelock. For. Councillor Page. Uh, for, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. For. Councillor Sokale. For. Councillor Stanford Bail. For. Councillor Williams. For. And Thanks. Councillor Rowland, who you skipped for. Uh, apologies. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> Thank you. I now make it as we, oh sorry, and now myself, who I almost skipped as well, I vote also for the proposal. I make it now as unanimous decision of those I've indicated either for or against. Thank you.
We will now move on to the final agenda item, number 12, application 200339 for the replacement of an existing telecom mast with a new lattice tower to support 5G. The report can be found on pages 95 to 114 of the agenda pack. I will now call on our planning officer, Richard Etoff, to introduce the report on this application. I will then call on councillors in the following order who have already indicated that they wish to speak on this item. Councillor Josh Williams, Councillor John Ennis, Councillor Ricky Devine, Councillor Karen Rowland and Councillor Sakali, Ayo Sakali. Thank you. And as before, if anyone wishes to indicate, please do so in the chat. I will now call Richard to introduce his report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application rates, relates to an established telecommunications base station site, uh, which is contained within an electricity substation located on the west side of Burfield Road in Southcote, close to the southern boundary of the borough with West Berkshire. Uh, photos of the site are at slide one. Uh, full planning permission is sought for replacement of an existing uh, 15 metre tall telecommunications monopole with a 25 metre tall lattice mast and ancillary ground level equipment. The larger tower is required due to the height of the surrounding clutter between the site location and the cell coverage area in order to provide improved coverage to existing customers, including the upgrade of 5G equipment and providing improved coverage for emergency services networks. Site plan is provided at slide two. Whilst located within an established electricity substation site, the site is within open countryside and within the Kennet and Holybrook Meadows major landscape area. A key consideration is the impact of the increase in height, width and change in form of the replacement lattice tower upon the character and views within the surrounding area. However, the visual impact of the replacement mast must be considered against the positive benefits of the development, particularly given the proposals uh, relating to the reuse of an existing tele telecommunications base station, which is encouraged by the National Planning Policy Framework and our policy OU3 of the Reading Borough Local Plan. In short and on balance, it is considered that the benefits of the proposed development in providing improved network coverage for residents in the emergency services network, together with the fact that the proposals are an upgrade of an existing telecommunication base station and are designed to be shared with other operators, therefore reducing the potential for new base, base stations and masts to be established elsewhere in this locality, are considered to outweigh the extent to which the increased height of the mast would detract from the visual amenity of the surrounding area and the character of the Kennet and Holybrook Meadows major landscape feature. Therefore, the officer recommendation is to grant full planning permission subject to the recommended conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'll now call Councillor Ennis to speak first on this item as the ward councillor due to our normal practice of calling them first. Then the running order will be Councillor Williams, Councillor Devine, Councillor Rowland, Councillor Sakali. Councillor Ennis, could you please address the committee? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you for calling me in first as a ward councillor. Um, I mean, my, my memory of 2005 in the opposition of um, of a mast in this area um, was I spoke as a as a, a young councillor, if only in his 40s. Um, of course, this is a bit different. And the questions that I'm going to ask is is addressing the um, opposition. There has been one uh, note of opposition. I'm trying to find it now. It's getting a bit dark. Uh, I've got it. It's on page 99. I mean, in the area, people have um, contacted us to ask about the height, the I think, but also the science. Now, I do appreciate that this is, you know, science is not an issue necessarily for planning purposes. Um, and I've made that point to some of the residents, but there has been one letter of objection um, and about the following comments. I'd like if the 
you know, the officers would be able to comment to it. There's been numerous reports regarding the introduction of 5G rollout, some in favour but the majority against until a comprehensive review is carried out regarding this rollout. It should not be installed. Um, so it's about safety review. Um, I do know about science, but it's important, I think, to raise the issue about safety re review and what you would say to some of the residents, well, particularly one resident who's objected, but others have said the same, um, you know, um, how safe it would be. The other question I want to raise, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if others may raise it, is, is there an opportunity to actually um, get some money for the well-being of the area, such as the Holybrook, um, you know, um, the Holybrook site, it might not be as nice there, but that is some nice area of natural beauty for the people of Southcote and Reading. And is it possible to extract some money to make that um, area much better, the brook itself in the area? Because it is unsightly, it's it's quite big. Um, you know, welcome to Reading, here's the antennae. Admitting that a lot of people do have 5G, so, um, you know, that that's a point. So if you could, answer them questions, that would be very helpful. Thank you. I'll call on Councillor Josh Williams. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I had planned to say a few things, but um, as always, Councillor Ennis has said much of it already, but I'll just go through it quickly. Um, so this is a replacement of a 15 metre pole, which is only half a metre wide with a 25 metre tower, which is between one and two metres wide. And the the area at the top will have a width of over four and a half metres, I think. So I'd suggest um, that I agree with, with Councillor Ennis that this is a significant increase over something I think that um, Planning Committee back in 2005 didn't want in the first place. Um, I think that I agree with the Natural Environment Officer uh, and their recommendation that such a big scale of change should be assessed properly from further afield. So when I get to the end of what, I'll, what I've been saying, I think my proposal will be for deferment in order to get a wider range of views. And I think this would also, if possible, allow us to see some more detail and possibly some officer comments or an officer review of the self declaration of the ICN IRP uh, compliance. So that's the element that says this is safe. So the ICN IRP, if I've got all those letters in the right order, they don't issue a certificate to verify safety and they don't evaluate um, developers certificates. So it publishes guidelines and those guidelines are in turn accepted into the NPPF. So I think that's on page 104 of our report, uh, section 6.17. But we don't have any independent um, review or even officer review of whether that self declaration um, is valid in any sense. So I think in an ideal world, I'd like to see a deferment so that we could get some comments on that safety aspect. Um, some kind of independent review of that self-declaration and some kind of views from wider afield on what is, I think, a significant increase. Um, so I would be happiest with deferment for more information, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Devine, could you please address the committee? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not so worried as Councillor Williams uh, about the ICN IRP issue because the safety, uh, given the, the distance it is from most dwellings uh, in the area, I don't think the safety is actually an issue. What I do have an issue with is the sizing and the massing of the replacement mast. Um, and especially since we've uh, had the, the uh, inspector's report um, on the appeal um, that was made on the original application. Um, on point seven and eight of the inspector's report, um, it said that the original mast uh, wouldn't necessarily ruin the vista as it was mostly screened uh, by existing trees. Um, clearly, uh, putting a 25 metre mast now in front of something that was 
fairly visible um, is making a huge difference. Um, and I'm not surprised that the natural environment, uh, uh, or the paragraph three to the national environment, paragraph 4.1, uh, where they object to, as it fails, and this is talking about the current application, to demonstrate that the replacement tower would not have an unacceptable impact on the surrounding landscape and major landscape area. Uh, it's not easy to see uh, from the details in front of us, and it would be nice to have a picture of the vista um, with some assessment of how much the mast would actually stick out like a sore thumb. And you can see now from the slide that's being shown, uh, it does st stick out over the tallest trees by some considerable distance. Um, and again, going back to the appeal report, um, point 10, the appellant confirmed that the antennas would be as shown in the submitted plans, this is the original report, and would not, as feared by some people, be extended when in use. And I think that is a, a telling comment that he only just uh, allowed the appeal um, on a 15 metre mast. A 25 metre mast, which as people have already commented, is several metres thick uh, and wide, is going to be a, a really sore thumb uh, for people trying to admire the vista from the surrounding area. So I'm against this and I actually suggest outright refusal. I'm not interested in waiting for the safety of an IN, IRP uh, because I don't think in actual fact uh, it's going to have any bearing. Uh, I just think we should refuse it on the mass and the uh, effect on the vista that is currently along the Kennet Valley. Thank you. Councillor Rowland, please address the committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, there are there are definitely issues with this, and I actually asked for a slide to be put up. Uh, hopefully, whilst I I speak, perhaps maybe in a minute, if they could if they could possibly get to it. Um, I note that some of the prior comments about uh, the fact that back in two thousand and five, there you can see hopefully on the screen a picture of uh, the from, that I took from Google Maps uh, currently where you're coming in from West Berkshire and um, on the left you've got the shorter pole that is now there in existence and on the right there you've got a welcome to Reading sign. Um, a pole that is going to be much larger than that and much more substantial in the air uh, and another 10 meters high will definitely make an impact on driving into the town from the south at this point. And so here we are, we've got something quite um, unattractive on our left that's going to be less attractive. And on the right, we've got our welcome to Reading sign. I do hope you'll forgive the burned out caravan there in the front, which does kind of prove my point that this is not a lovely entrance into the town. Um, my concerns with this are not so much about the um, science because it is nothing that we can actually comment on within the planning application. I will um, apprise anyone that's viewing this currently at this time to know and understand that a lot of these 5G um, applications have gone through in the scope of permitted development. The reason this one has come forward is because of its extreme size and it's 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 so much it's wider and it's going to be taller. And so that one that is the reason that this one has come to the planning applications committee, but not to say that under permitted development that that others have not already happened. So we're talking about a particular one here of many that um, that are going to be happening around Reading. So um, I wish that above all in showing that slide as I did, that science aside, we can also put to some kind of measure, some, some amelioration about the unattractive nature of what we're going to have in front of us when in 2005 this committee rejected uh, the the current uh, poll. The I went back and read the inspector's report from uh, from 2005, wherein he overruled uh, the uh, the 
PAC's decision on this. And he does note that still this this is a situation about the the uh, sensitivity of the site. We do have the Holy Brook right nearby. That is a natural area that we should be able to enjoy nature around us. Um, I also note that in our PAC two in item 6.9, that officers requested a views assessment from the applicant and were never provided with one. Uh, and I believe, um, I'm not quite sure here, that they also asked for some longer distance views too. So when it was seen in 2005 that, that from the inspector that you could observe it from the Holy Brook, uh, then we've got, we've got the same situation here, only going kind of supersized. So how I would sit down there and ask for anything, I'm in favor of the application because of the fact that we simply don't have any means to, or really strength to refuse this. But what I would like to see is something being done to the site, even of an amenity type of nature to, um, to deal with the uh, unattractiveness of it. Uh, I'm sorry that, that that may sound a little bit uh, airy fairy when we're talking about science and everything, but I believe all those other points, we, we have nothing to stand on. However, um, in, in seeking clarification from the officer today, I understood that the red line only goes directly down underneath that, uh, that large platform. And so really, all we could really do or ask for would be plantings or, or hedges or trees or something like that that would not really disguise this, but I feel like something should be done. And I feel like in 2005, the committee was not wrong in expressing their concerns and we're going to see something bigger here that we should also again express our concerns. But so that that's kind of where I stand. I don't see any way to refuse it, but I really would like to see what we what kind of amelioration on any target that could be done about at least the site and the welcome to Reading that this is creating. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowland. Councillor Sakale. Thank you, Chair. Um, Council Rowland has made a great case and she's made it clear that the issue of this planning application isn't actually about the health issues, but it's not been in the remit of PAC of this planning application committee as uh, set out in policy. It's about this, the NPPF's policies about us supporting the expansion of 5G. However, I wanted to take this opportunity to reiterate that the current guidance and evidence doesn't show that exposure to radio waves causes any adverse health issues. And though members of the public may be concerned and may have reservations about the safety, they must refrain from taking actions to damage these networks, especially at a time like this where we have emergency services and key workers working really hard to keep us all connected and keep us all safe at this time. That was just me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Page, please address the committee. Yes. Chair, I, I thank Councillor Sakali for that last uh, comment. I won't uh, uh, repeat that. Um, the fact is that uh, uh, technology and the advance um, in technology requires um, these taller masts at a number of locations. Uh, we all have mobile phones and we all want better reception and better service. Um, the only person that, in my opinion, has any right uh, to object to this sort of uh, mast is somebody who does not own a mobile phone and has no intention of owning one. Um, and I would suggest through you, uh, Chair, to, to Councillor Duveen, um, that this has to go somewhere. And the point is made very appropriately in paragraph 2.2 .2 on page 98 that the tower would provide opportunity for additional operators to site share in the future. Um, and certainly I would prefer to see one tall mast such as this rather than uh, a proliferation of smaller masts or indeed applications for masts on top of buildings. And I think that would probably be uh, the sentiment of, uh, uh, of most people. Um, I take a more relaxed view, view about the provision of these 
uh, Mars. Uh, just picking up on the thrust of what Councillor Rowland was saying, I suppose the uh, the ultimate recommendation would be to hang um, window baskets packs from the top of the tower um, with green hanging out from it and it's best an attempt to camouflage it. Um, but that might well uh, interfere with the efficacy of the signal. Um, unless there is some way uh, of uh, camouflaging uh, the tower in that way, I don't think we've got any other option but to uh, approve uh, this application, Chair. And I support granting the application. Thank you. We'll be calling toward the vote at the appropriate time. Do any further councillors wish to speak on this item? <clears throat> yes, please, Chair. I did try and uh, Councillor Lovelock. Um, it just, uh, just a thought. Uh, is the colour on this plan the colour that the mast is likely to be? Because it seemed to me something in dark green with appropriate shrubbery around the bottom would be a lot more attractive than something that looks like, I don't know, that bright blue. Is that just a, uh, can we insist on the colour of the thing? Uh, for that, I'll ask our planning officer to come in directly on. Richard? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm afraid I can't see the details of the um, uh, on the screen at the moment. And um, ah. but normally these things are greyish. Um, we could probably condition uh, probably the um, the colour of the of the lattice. Um, uh, you know, it might be a, a galv colour or it might be um, painted, um, you know, grey or grey green. Uh, we know from the Brock Barracks, uh, if anyone knows uh, that, uh, um, the installations on top of that, you, you, you may not have even have noticed them because some of them are uh, coloured up to even look like bricks. Mm -hmm. So some of them might be able to be painted, um, but obviously I'm, uh, we haven't gone back to the uh, applicant to check this and it might be prudent to do so. Chair, hmm. I just butt in there? I'm glad Thanks Richard mentioned Brock Barracks because I recollect that we specifically conditioned that. There was a discussion around that and I'm sure that we must be able to condition um, uh, a, a colour um, in this uh, in this case as well. So I would I would support looking at uh, attaching uh, a condition if at all possible. OK. OK, so I now have essentially three separate proposals on the table. One is to move forward with an additional condition towards camouflaging. One is to defer for scientific evidence to be gathered. And one is to refuse for on grounds of its visual dominance. I'm going to make my comments as my own councillor first, and then I'm going to ask councillors in turn if they wish to vote on those Sorry matters to as they agree. Yes. I, I did ask a question about the um what would you say the letter of objection? I did ask officers to comment on that. I'm going to make my comment first as chair and then the officers will then get to make their comments. Wendy will make theirs. I'm trying to explain the procedure yeah, moving no, forward. No Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. And then it will be asking each councillor if they wish to make their proposal to the vote of the committee at the appropriate time because it will be a recorded vote. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my comments are addressed to the science as previously or mostly restricted to the science, as well indicated through the report. It's not up to this committee to make an individual judgment on the science. We have national bodies to protect us, primarily driven through Public Health England and through Ofcom. While there is to some extent some self-certification that the base stations meet these, Ofcom has a rolling programme of monitoring of base stations and particularly impacting on the design element. And then they go in situ and look at different B 
base stations. I can send Councillor Williams some of the research on that. But unfortunately, as previously indicated in the question that I responded to for the committee meeting of the 17th of July 2019, and in the debate we had on the 9th of October 2019, again, relating to our consultation on a 5G where extensions were proposed for increasing permit development rights. That wouldn't be an appropriate grounds, particularly for deferral and certainly not for refusal. What we can do is take that separately if Councillor Williams would like and an appropriate briefing note or question can be asked the committee to clarify that. Councillor Williams, are you OK with that proposal so that we'd not put a deferral to a vote of the committee? You please uh, thank you very much, Chair. Yes, partly. Um, I don't fully understand if there's a clear programme of checking of these, why that I don't think that was in our report. So that self declaration still has a concern for me, but I accept that you probably know more than I do on this and officers will know even more uh, on top of that. So I would appreciate a, a relatively short briefing note would satisfy that. But I guess my deferment was for two things. I also wanted those views from a distance, if you like, that officers had requested and that the applicant had not submitted. However, um, Chair, I'm hearing that most of the committee is in favour of this without those. Um, and if that's the case, then there's no point asking us all to uh, speak our names and say for and against on deferment. OK, thank you. We can arrange an appropriate briefing note going forward uh, for a further meeting of this committee at a later date. Thank you. I'm now going to call uh, Richard Etoff if you'd wish to comment on anything that's been said during the debate so far. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I've been uh, following um, members' comments, and if you're uh, going to put up to the vote um, to approve with that uh, additional condition, um, I think that's fine. I just can I just make a comment on some of the other things that were said about possible amelioration or or whatever um, to uh, perhaps um, mitigate the visual impact of this mast. Uh, I I don't think any of the uh, things we've heard would be would be possible. So I think you are limited to um, the colour of the masts and the equipment on it and dealing with that within the application in front of you. In my opinion, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ennis, can you please address the committee? Yeah, thank you. I do want to come back. Um, mm -hmm. I'm slightly disappointed that the deferment is not coming forward um, because, you know, um, the comprehensive review would have been good. I think the comments made by Councillor Williams um, I thought were very relevant, actually. Uh, it's not to say no, um, it's not to be a hypocrite, as Councillor Page has said. Uh, I have a phone that will probably have 5G um, and that's and that's some sort of pity because I think it would have been good going forward because this won't be the last this may be the first but it certainly won't be the last and we could have got a comprehensive review you know sorted out and said this is the way it is going forward and it would have made you know others uh, coming forward a lot less controversial because I believe it's will be controversial going forward into other areas. So I take it all it is now is a straightforward yes, a refusal or grant. Am I right in saying that, Chair? Uh, we will get back to that later and I will present what we'll be voting on at the because, appropriate point. So I'm just saying there's no deferral then, there's no deferral on the table. Not currently, unless you wish to propose and be clear in your reasons for that proposal. This no. is not the first nor the last. And as stated in my comments, I have tried to support the committee in the answer to the public committee and in the debate we held in October so that that was fully understood by all members. Councillor Williams has asked a further point of clarification on a specific impact 
element of that of which I've agreed to provide for the next. Are you wishing to make a proposal for deferral? Councillor Ennis? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. Then Councillor Rowland, you have indicated you wish to speak. I did. Um, well, I thought Councillor Ennis was kind of kind of going there. I, I was uh, somewhat following him on this. Uh, um, I, I would like to kind of go back and ask whether what uh, Mr. Etoff said was was absolutely correct, that in any kind of amelioration for this site and for the views, that the only thing we might possibly expect is uh, is possibly an army green color perhaps being painted on this i and he's seeming to say that it's like doesn't seem like we're going to get anything at ground level or whatever which is where a lot of people look i i don't know I, i'm i'm i've now gotten back a little more frustrated because um uh councillor williams also brought up the fact about about the fact that I had raised about 6.9 with the views, and he had also raised it too, that we don't have any scoping of what these views are. And I feel like there needs to be something more than just a walking away and a yes or a no on this situation. There needs to be something more to this. I So I apologize for being a bit of a, bit of a loss there, but uh, maybe I'll, the question is to uh, Richard Etoff, is is that the only thing we can hope for is an army green mast? OK. Uh, uh, yes, please, Richard. Um, uh, I mean, I completely understand the uh, sentiments from Councillor Rowland. I think the problem here is if I read the um, site location plan correctly, is that there's an extremely limited application site. Um, in, in these cases, what tends to happen is that there's a, a compound or something, and then the mobile phone operator has a, a lease for a lease for a very small area of land. And as you can see, that's basically the sort of concrete plinth here. So over the, the land over which the applicant has control here is extremely limited. So if we try to put a condition on for, I don't know, landscaping or something within that compound, the, the, the operator developer is not going to be able to, to deliver it. So uh, I think we are looking at, at the coloration of the of the um, the tower and the and the equipment. Um, if we could have that as a pre commencement condition, um, then we could have uh, con control over that. Under normal circumstances, it might be something that officers would say would come back to committee. But I'm fully mindful of the fact that we don't want to bring too much back towards committee. So perhaps there's a um, a way that that could be uh, dealt with at a at a lower level. Um, perhaps uh, uh, Wendy or someone could comment on that. What, what might be the, the the correct level for that, if that's felt helpful? OK. Uh, I'm going to call Julie Williams to speak, if you would wish to, our planning manager. OK, um, yes, thank you, Chair. I've been listening very carefully to the debate going on. Um, I'm hearing, I'm picking up disquiet from councillors about the lack of information in terms of the view of this mast, in terms of uh, being able to appreciate what it would look like from all points of view, so from the borough looking out and also from West Berkshire looking in. Um, I think it looks like we also need to get some clarity from the developer on the eventual colour of the mass and if indeed they do have any suggestions for um, not disguising it, you're not going to disguise a 25 metre high mass, but to see if there's any way that they can suggest that they could make it easier on the eye and also to explore if, if they would be agreeable to pre-commencement conditions. We need to get their agreement to those in any event. Um, I don't like deferring matters from committee because it's good to get the work done, but um, you're asking questions that we are not being able to answer tonight. So I'm tended to suggest that we defer so we can get this information for you 
So because you seem to be on balance between the small group of you that we have before us tonight, that may be the safest option to to go down. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to call Wendy Batherson to speak next. Is there anything you wish to tell committee from a legal point of view? Um, yes, Chairman, if we're going to defer the matter because that's a uh, that's not the recommendation before you, then there will need to be a seconder for that particular proposal. OK. Councillor Devine, as you were the first to raise the prospect, sorry, Councillor Williams, as you were the first to raise the prospect of a deferral on primarily views as well as site grounds. I will be your seconder if you wish to raise that proposal. Thank you, Chair. You're very generous. I knew I was right all along. I don't know why I doubted myself. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> happens that way. Before we get that far, Councillor Devine, you had previously indicated that you would wish to raise a proposal to refuse this. Do you wish that put to the vote? Uh, I'm happy if we defer it uh, and we ask for um, more photographic evidence of what a new mask would look like uh, against uh, the background from a distance, uh, because I think that's that's the real issue. Uh, if people don't feel uh, comfortable uh, with what we've got in front of us in terms of evidence, um, then I'm happy to defer. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Councillor Ennis, you've indicated you wish to speak. I have, and I'd like to thank thank um, Councillor oh, Councillor Julie Williams, Julie Williams, to um, thank you for that. Um, see, Councillor Williams, Josh, I didn't have your, I didn't have the confidence to go forward on the deferment, but I am really pleased that that is now being put on offer, and maybe uh, an appeal to the officers to to get that, um, you know, that that identification and comprehensive review going forward and then there'll be no issues at all. So I, I really welcome your intervention, um, the Williams's intervention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so then we'll put it to the vote. And we'll just clarify what we're voting on. It's a deferral on this item to seek some views of the currently proposed mask from the developer some a discussion to be had on how they can alter the painting elements the surface to reduce its visual dominance within this the vista and to provide separately a briefing note to come forward to committee on the planning context of 5g focus particularly upon the international guidelines which are produced and how the UK then enacts them within our law. Councillors, does anyone else wish to speak at this point before I put the item to the vote? Thank you. I'll now ask officers, is it, do they wish to say anything before this moves to the vote? Nothing further from me, Chair. Perfect. Then, thank you. We're going to call everyone in alphabetical order again. Councillor Devine, do you vote for, against or abstain on the motion to defer this application? For the motion to defer, Chair. Councillor John Ennis. Uh, agree to defer. Councillor Joe Lovelock. Agree to defer. Councillor Tony Page. Yes, OK. Councillor Simon Robinson. Agree to defer. Thank you. Councillor Karen Rowland. Agree to defer. Councillor Ayo Sakale. I agree to defer. Councillor Jane Stanford Bale. I agree to defer, reluctantly. Councillor Josh Williams. Thank you, Chair. Agree to defer. And Myself, I will agree to defer to our next meeting, which will almost certainly be online again. I'm now going to call this meeting to a close at 2014. And thank everyone for their attendance on something that's gone relatively smooth.
Yeah, thank you for chairing it so well, Councillor. Indeed, well done. Thank you very much, Chair. I always take compliments. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> it was a good job. It was nice as well. It's a Monday, apparently. <laughs>